Okay, so before next uh, next week is a holiday. Before next class, please read from 1930 to 1990. Okay, now back to the beginning, page 1834. Uh, so in this part that I have marked for you, Satan is looking around where he wakes up, which is hell. Uh, and he's talking to his followers. He's going to convince them to follow him even in hell. Into what pit thou seest from what height fallen, so much the stronger proved he with his thunder. So uh, look at how deep we have been banished. That is how powerful God is. Until then, who knew the force of those dire arms? And before this battle, who knew he was so powerful? Yet not for those, nor what the potent victor in his rage can else inflict, do I repent or change. But I do not change or uh, ask for forgiveness because of his power or because of whatever he does when he's angry. So Satan here is saying, I don't change anything. I don't repent or change. Though changed in outward luster, that fixed mind in high disdain from sense of injured merit, that with the mightiest raised me to contend and to the fierce contention brought along innumerable force of spirits armed that durst dislike his reign and me preferring. So now he's starting to summarize the battle uh, for the reader. So he says, I don't change my mind, but my appearance has changed. Line 97, though changed in outward luster, luster means shine, brightness. So even though he's a powerful angel, he is no longer a shining angel. Uh, so he doesn't repent, doesn't change his fixed mind and high disdain, bi uh, shi, disdain for God. From sense of injured merit, uh, because he feels that God has offended him. That with the mightiest raised me to contend. Uh, because he feels offended, he fought with the mightiest, here meaning God. This The, the order of this sentence should be from sense of injured merit that raised me to contend with the mightiest. And to the fierce contention, the battle, brought along innumerable force of spirits, uh, so his followers, fellow angels, armed that durst dislike his reign and me preferring. All of these angels are also armed and fighting. They dislike God. They prefer to follow me. His utmost power, God's power, with adverse power opposed in dubious battle on the plains of heaven and shook his throne. So uh, he says, if we return this to plain English, he's saying, I have already decided I dislike God. He offends me. I am not following him. So I gathered p uh, angels who think like I do, and we fought against God's angels in heaven. And the battle was so powerful that in line 105, it shook his throne, Wang Wei. So it was a very powerful, uh, destructive battle. And of course they lose, uh, Satan loses. So he says, what though the field be lost? In Chinese, 输了又怎样? All is not lost. The unconquerable will, 意志, and study of revenge, immortal hate, and courage never to submit or yield. And what is else not to be overcome? So Satan is saying, we lost the battle, but I st we still have all of these things. Right? We still have... Um, our own willpower, 
we still have the urge to revenge, we still have immortal hate, and we still have the courage never to follow others. And since we have all of this, what is else not to be overcome? What can we ca what can we not do? That glory never shall his wrath or might extort from me. Uh, no matter how powerful God is, he will never take away all of this from me. To bow and sue for grace with suppliant knee. Sue here means ask. To ask for mercy on one knee. And deify his power who from the terror of this arm so laid doubted his empire. So if I ask for forgiveness, I will be recognizing that God truly is the most powerful God, even though we almost won the battle. So like, he's not that powerful. We almost won. But if I were now to admit and submit to him, that were low indeed. That would be very low. It would make me low. That were an ignominy and shame beneath this downfall. So if I now submit to God, it would be even worse than losing to God in battle. Since by fate the strength of God's and this imperial substance cannot fail, since through experience of this great event in arms not worse, in foresight much advanced, we may with more successful hope resolve to wage by force or guile eternal war irreconcilable to our grand foe who now triumphs, and in the excess of joy, soul reigning holds the tyranny of heaven. So the idea here is angels cannot die. So since we cannot die, and since we still have this willpower and this courage, we can keep on fighting uh, in by force, which means directly, or guile, which means using trickery. We can keep fighting. So that's his plan. His first plan to his followers is we've lost, but we're not going to give up. So uh, I'm now on line 125. So spake the apostate angel. Apostate here means someone who has betrayed God. Uh, so this is what Satan said. Though in pain, vaunting aloud, but racked with deep despair. So he sounds powerful and strong, but really he's suffering and he's in despair. And him thus answered soon his bold compeer. So one of his followers answers him. O prince, O chief of many throned powers that led them battled seraphim to war. Seraphim means angel. That led them battled seraphim to war under thy conduct and in dreadful deeds fearless endangered heaven's perpetual king. So you're the guy who led us into war and almost defeated God. And put to proof his high supremacy, whether upheld by strength or chance or fate. And you made God have to prove that he is the strongest. Whether he won the war either by strength or chance or fate. Too well I see and rue, which means regret. The dire event, which means outcome, that with sad overthrow and foul defeat hath lost us heaven. So he's saying, I think back and I regret that we have lost heaven because we dared to fight. And all this mighty host, host means army, all this mighty army in horrible destruction laid thus low, as far as God's and heavenly essences can perish. So again, angels can't die. So this is the worst punishment that could happen to them. For the mind and spirit remains invincible and vigor soon returns, though all our glory extinct and happy state here swallowed up in endless misery. So he's agreeing with Satan. As long as we keep our mind free, uh, our strength will return sooner or later. But, but what if he, our conqueror, God, whom I now of force believe almighty, 
since no less than such could have overpowered such force as ours. So he only admits that God is strongest because he won the war. What if God have left us this, our spirit and strength entire, strongly to suffer and support our pains? So what if God left us free will and left us the power to feel so that pain is our punishment? What if free will and pain are our true punishment? That we may so, I'm on line 148. That we may so suffice his vengeful ire. And in that way, God takes uh, his anger out on us by making us suffer. Or do him mightier service as his thralls by right of war, whatever his business be, here in the heart of hell to work in fire or do his errands in the gloomy deep. So this is very interesting. What if God gave us free will so that whatever we choose to do would help God? It's like God has a master plan, right? So it's like he says to the humans, you can choose whether to follow me or not. But I know you're not going to follow me, so I'm going to punish you here. This angel is saying, what if God knows what we're going to do? And so he lets us choose what he wants us to do. In other words, he's saying to Satan, what if you are falling into God's trap? Continuing, what can it then avail, which means how much use could it be? Though yet we feel strength undiminished or eternal being to undergo eternal punishment. Where to the speedy words the arch fiend replied, the arch fiend is Satan. So this is what Satan replies. Fallen cherub, cherub means angel. To be weak is miserable doing or suffering. But of this be sure to do aught good never will be our task but ever to do ill our soul delight as being the contrary to his high will whom we, we resist. So first he responds by saying, you only think like this because you have currently lost your power. In other words, if you wait and you gather more strength, you won't be afraid of God like this. But second, Satan's reply is to promise. He says, I promise we will not do anything good. We will only do whatever goes against God's will. It, uh, continuing, line 162. If then his providence out of our evil seek to bring forth good, our labor must be to pervert that end and out of good still to find means of evil. So, yes, we're going to do whatever God does not want us to do. But... If God did set us a trap to make our evil into good, then our next task is to take that good and turn it back into evil. Which oft times may succeed, so as perhaps shall grieve him if I fail not and disturb his inmost counsels from their destined aim. And he says that when we try to turn good into evil, we will most of the time succeed and will make him angry or uh, make him sad. OK, so again, Satan is trying to bullshit people. Right, he's saying if God has set us a trap, we will turn that trap around. But like. How? How? would you know whether it is a trap set by God? And if you fall into that trap, how will you turn it around? He even says we will most likely succeed again. How do you know? So here again, Satan is bullshitting his own followers. He's saying things that sound good, that sound comforting. But which if you think about it, they don't make sense. Uh, I'm now on line 169. But see the angry victor, God, 
hath recalled his ministers of vengeance and pursuit back to the gates of heaven. So God's army has returned back to heaven. The sulfurous hail shot after us in storm or blown hath laid the fiery surge that from the precipice of heaven received us falling and the thunder winged with red lightning and impetuous rage perhaps hath spent his shaft and ceases now to bellow through the vast and boundless deep. So he's saying, look, God's army has returned. They're no longer trying to hit us from heaven. Let us not slip the occasion. We have to make the most of this opportunity. Whether scorn or satiate fury yielded from our foe. So why did God stop attacking? Is it because they have contempt for us, be the woman, or is it because he's no longer angry? Either way, they've stopped attacking. We have to take this chance. And so uh, the devils, you know, fallen angels are basically devils. So the devils um, begin a meeting to discuss what to do and how to take revenge on God, which we have talked about today. Okay, um, so let's stop here. Remember next week to read up to page, uh, what was it, 1990? Right? Not next week, in two weeks. Read up to page 1990. Okay, that's it.